Number 12, walkable community evaluation report. It's really great because we all sit down together collectively and we figure out what our priorities are for us and also for the city manager and staff to, to keep our city moving in the right direction. HRT has a hundred million dollars in backlog bus needs. It's a hundred million bucks. Of course, economic development creating jobs is really important making sure that our, our schools are doing well, transportation, all of the things that really make a difference in the city and to give a quality of life for our citizens. If we don't do something this year, we're gonna lose some house. Probably the biggest uh, concern I have is the Chesapeake Beach area. Uh, we really need to get the sand replenishment project done on Chesapeake Beach. It's about a $4 million project and uh, we need to get that into the budget so the city manager can move forward with that project. This council retreat is very important from the standpoint that we're trying to set what the priorities are going to be for this year. Um, a lot of the things that we discuss are going to be um, things that we implement in the coming year, uh, things that we provide funding for in the next coming year, and so it's very important uh, that the council gets together and flushes out what's most important to the city. The point in time count is an annual count that is required by HUD, and that's the Housing and Urban Development. Um, and they require this um, point in time count every year, um, and we count our homeless population that's living on the streets and in shelter. I don't think this is an area or population that you could work with if you really don't have a true passion for it. Developing trust and rapport with people, if not authentic, doesn't go very far. I got mine. You know, I'm blessed. God blessed me with what I've got. But it, it could disappear in a heartbeat, in a heartbeat. And I could be hanging out here. And hopefully somebody will come to me and say, this is for you. And that's only why I do it. That's why our church does it. The faith-based community, it, they are the ones that started the whole, this whole effort to, uh, to provide services to our homeless population. So they were the pioneers for the city of Virginia Beach, which makes Virginia Beach this unique and awesome community when it comes to ending homelessness. It's sad that people have to go through certain situations to get somewhere, but it's a blessing that you do have people. If you're out here on the streets, you have somebody that has your back. Somebody's gonna be there for you. The biggest thing that I found in working with homeless is that people usually identify very specific things about what they think homeless people are, that they're drug addicts or alcoholics, or they have some circumstance that made them a bad person or made them not as intelligent as others, That created some situation where they became homeless and you don't realize until you're out here talking to people and trying to understand their situation that they're really just like everybody else. And sometimes it's just a string of unfortunate circumstances that lead up to something terrible. The reality of it is, is most people are only a couple of paychecks away from being homeless or being evicted. And most people don't really get the idea that once you get evicted or get certain criminal charges or something like that, that can ruin your opportunity of obtaining stable housing. This is a meeting of the ASTM International Committee on Homeland Security Applications Response Robots. This is a standards effort that's international, focused on air, ground, and water robot systems that are intended for emergency response applications. The committee that's here is uh, essentially international test administrators coming from seven, eight different countries, Japan, Korea, Germany, Canada, all across the U.S. 30 different robots brought by manufacturers, responders who have purchased their own equipment, and um, test administrators who are here really to administer the, the event. 
We put ground terrains into the systems to increase the complexity. We do the same thing for the aerials using a fan wall, just not to provide a wind tunnel, provide turbulence. Same thing happens in the water tank. We use under submerged water pumps, pumping water through the work volume of the test so that they're getting jostled around continuously. A lot of the test methods, what they do is they involve um, certain manipulative skills. Can your robot turn a valve off maybe for a leaking gas? Uh, can your robot turn a doorknob and open a door? So this gives you a apples to apples, a side by side comparative of a robot's ability to overcome an obstacle. My country, they are developing uh, several robots, but uh, the number of the application is limited. So sometimes we have a failure. So uh, we have a basic uh, response robot technology, but combining this uh, test method, uh, we believe to improve our robot. So the good news is the robotics is advancing rather quickly. Uh, from my perspective though, they're not near there yet. So, you know, we're from the Intelligent Systems Division. We see a lot of advanced technologies, we've developed a lot of advanced technologies. We administer robot competitions where the best in class robots are measurably head and shoulders above the robots that we see deployed. Today we get to celebrate the grand opening of our new teen space here at our central library. And it is in dedication of a young lady who absolutely loved the central library and spent most of her time here in this space. This is a very, very, very special project for me. On February 3rd, 2015, we got the worst news of our life that our daughter took her own life in on the campus of William and Mary. After the shock of our lives, and we started to, took an e one whole year before we could start to reflect on how to keep her memory alive. Of all things in the world, Cypria loved books, and she loved reading, and she loved libraries. And the Virginia Beach Central Library is where she spent her evenings of high school. She was a Princess Anne High School graduate. From what I have read, uh, Sapria was a, an amazing individual. Dr. Ron Gabajula's daughter was a voracious reader, and she spent a lot of time at the Central Library right here um, during her formative years in high school, and uh, she had a nickname. Uh, she was such a voracious reader. Her nickname was the Book Anaconda because she read so many books. But she spent her teen years and uh, most of her adult life, so to speak, the last 10 years here in Virginia Beach. And we have a big community, and the Princess Anne uh, High School has a lot of graduates in the region. So we think of Virginia Beach as our second home, and we would like for this to be her memorial because a lot of people know us as a family here. 